Looks like the 49ers are not done yet in NFL free agency. And could one of those remaining moves be a move for an all-pro safety? We're going to talk about that also 49ers owner Jed York saying that Brock Purdy has earned and is going to be due a massive contract extension, which could come in at about $40 million per year. This is the San Francisco 49ers report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. Thanks for hanging out here with us. Let's talk some Niners. Kyle Shanahan said this week from the NFL owners meetings that the 49ers are still in the market for free agent safety. And I know a lot of you right now are in the comment section getting ready to type, well, Chase, what about Talanoa Hufanga? From the Niners standpoint, they're looking at this situation saying to themselves, this is a really good player. We drafted him in the fifth round. He's been better than anybody anticipated for a late rounder. Year one, Impact guy on the defense and special teams. Year two, he was an all-pro. Year three, once again, a defensive weapon, a defensive Swiss Army knife, who isn't necessarily a great coverage safety, but we hit him as part of the scheme, and as part of that, we relied on his strengths. But because he's coming off that torn ACL, severe injury, he's in a contract year, and could demand big-time money, San Francisco has to do what good businesses do. Look ahead for alternative options. Also, he's been a little bit of a liability in pass coverage, and he is not a traditional deep safety who is going to be really good against the pass and have that range as that center field type of safety in this defensive scheme and on this defense. I would not rule this out as far as Talanoa Hufanga goes. Could he play a little bit of linebacker? He's already played hybrid linebacker for San Francisco. They utilize him at that second level. He's been in the box. He's been set up flanked to the edge rusher. He's been included in these blitz packages. He makes stout plays against the run. Some of you have asked me, understanding the nuances of this scheme and safety play in general. Chase, can he play slot or nickel corner? He's a little bit too slow for that because that requires you to have quick feet, flip the hips, and be fast. So that's not necessarily a fit. But the Niners here are in a position where, again, contract year coming off the injury, they don't have that true strong safety currently on this team. And they're running into a little bit of a predicament here. We're telling o Hufonga and Jair Brown. Both really good players. Brown, a third-round pick. Hufonga, a fifth-round pick, are more free safeties. They don't as much excel as that deep, strong safety as some other players, like a Justin Simmons, who we're going to talk about, a Julian Blackman, an Eddie Jackson. The 49ers want and need a safety who has coverage range and sideline-to-sideline -side speed to cover the pass. Hufonga generates interceptions. That's just because of how instinctual, how smart he is as a football player, where he can diagnose things before they happen. Special skill set. So again, could you use him as kind of that hybrid linebacker? You're not going to try it out three safeties in the NFL. Offenses will take advantage of that by spreading out, with all of the crossers, different route combinations, it's simply not going to happen. But you could still have him and Jair Brown as a part of this defense in a multitude of ways. The top free agent safeties out there who fit that strong safety mold, Justin Simmons by far and away the number one guy. Quandre Diggs, formerly of the Seattle Seahawks, Niner fans know him well. Eddie Jackson was a first-team All-Pro in 2018, injured the last two years. As a veteran, Deshaun Gibson type, he could be in that role and don't rule out a Deshaun Gibson return. He's played really good football for this team for a little money the last two years. Niners brought in Julian Blackman on a visit last week. They didn't guarantee him that starting safety job. He'd have to compete for it. Hufong is going to have to compete for it as well as the safety position. Going to be a good training camp battle. And then J. Ron Kurse of the Dallas Cowboys says, put some good football in tape and on the resume. The dream option here would be Justin Simmons. And I'm bringing him back to the forefront of this conversation because the Niners, according to Mike Silver, 
who's as tapped into this organization as anybody out there, maybe outside of Matt Mayoko of NBC Sports Bay Area, reported a couple of weeks ago, start a free agency that the Niners checked in on Justin Simmons. Veteran player, team captain, great for the culture, and a still really good football player. Checks off the boxes with everything that the Niners want. He is that free-range, strong safety who is good against the pass. And you don't have to use him in the box like a Jair Brown, Talano Hufonga, because you want to put your players in a position to succeed. You want to lean into their strengths. That's what the Niners did with Brown and Hufonga. For Justin Simmons, he's so experienced in this league. He's so good. He's so smart that you know you have things on lockdown when he's playing center field. And speaking of the center field skills, 30 interceptions since coming into the league in 2016 leads all players. And yes, he's about to enter his age 31 season, but four-time second-team All-Pro, and he's gotten those honors all in recent years. And the numbers here, still really good. 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. The last four years, you see the pass breakups, you see the interceptions, still a very sound tackler, also a big play generator with those forced fumbles as well. Justin Simmons, as part of that safety group with Talano Hufanga and Jair Brown, then you have George Odom as a backup, maybe Deshaun Gibson in the fold. That's a strength right there on your defense. Should the Niners sign Justin Simmons? If so, and if you're on that train, hit that thumbs up icon like the video. If not, I want you to comment why and explain your reasoning. Today's show is sponsored by Game Time. If you're looking for the best seats at the lowest price guaranteed, the only app that you should be using is Game Time. And it's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices. Show your total up front. So you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. I've used some of these other ticketing apps before we partner with Game Time. It takes me forever to buy some tickets. And sometimes I'm in a time crunch. Got to do it in a pinch. I'm able to use the app Game Time because it's easy, but also when I'm in a pinch, last minute tickets. It's the best app for that. They have zone deals, they have flash deals for last minute tickets for big time savings and the game time app guarantees that you'll always have the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Here's what you have to do. Download the app for free, make uh, an account, you use the code chat sports and you get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code chat sports, $20 off. Link is hanging out down in the show notes and in the comment section of this video. Is Brock about to get a bag? Niners are about to pay up here if he plays well in 2024. 49ers owner Jed York hinted that Purdy could be due for a massive payday. Here's the direct quote from the Niners owner from the NFL owners meetings. It's a good problem when your quarterback is one of the highest paid guys on your team and in the league. It's what the market is. Brock is going to ask for something that no one has ever asked for before. And he's talking about quarterbacks for the Niners because they haven't had a quarterback ask for a price tag like this. Jed York continues by saying, I don't know how many players are making over $40 million annually as a quarterback right now. We have the answer for you, Jed York, if you're watching the show and for everybody watching. So stay tuned. But is $40 million the starting point for Brock Purdy in these negotiations, which are most likely going to take place this time next year when he has one more year left on his rookie contract? In order to get paid, Brock is going to have to do a couple of things and check off a few boxes here. It's going to have to play well. It's number one. He's going to have to show that 2022 and 2023 were not a fluke, that he's indeed legit. He can continue to elevate his teammates. He can continue to be productive and display what he's displayed so far in a season and a half as a starting quarterback in this league. Timing, accuracy, anticipation, processing, touch. 
I think that Kyle Shanahan can allow him to use his legs a little bit more, makes him even more dangerous. The league at some point is going to adjust to what he does well and what Kyle Shanahan does well. Can Brock Purdy counter-adjust to the league? That's what the great quarterbacks do. He's also going to have to stay healthy. He did in 2023, but had the elbow surgery going into this past year. And Kyle Shanahan making some good points yesterday, saying, we're excited to have Brock Purdy for a full offseason. He's never had that as the Niners quarterback because he was drafted, and then he was QB3 year one, and last year he was coming off the elbow injury. Also, Purdy's going to have to keep winning, and he's going to have to keep producing. Brock Purdy, up to this point, too, has been a steal, a bargain, maybe the best deal in the National Football League because of what the Niners have gotten from him and how little they've paid him. In 2022, as a rookie, he had a base salary of $705,000. Took the team to the NFC Championship game. 2023, this past year, a base salary of $870,000. That money don't go long in NorCal or in California in general with those state taxes. I'm telling you that, and with how much money he's having to pay for rent. That's why he had a roommate near the facility. 2024 upcoming this year, $985,000, still under a million bones. And in the final year of his circuit contract, he finally joins the Millionaire Club, but not with those taxes. $1.1 million in base salary, set to become an unrestricted free agent in 2026. You look at this, again, for the production that he's given the Niners and what they've paid him, this has been a straight-up bargain for San Francisco. That's why it's so important for them to capitalize on this window and win a championship with this Super Bowl roster because if he's making 40 mil and when he makes 40 mil, if he gets that, you're going to have to gut the roster elsewhere. This is also insane. Purdy is going to count less against the cap than these quarterbacks across the NFL. Skylar Thompson, Shane Buchel, Aiden O'Connell, shout out to the AOC fans, Sam Ellinger, Nathan Peterman, and then two quarterbacks on this roster, Josh Dobbs and Brandon Allen. None of those players are starters in this league. As far as what the price tag could be for Brock Purdy, right now this is the list of the top 10 highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL per year. Joe Burrow, number one at 55 mil. Justin Herbert, 52 and a half million. Lamar Jackson at 52. Jalen Hurts at 51. Kyler Murray at 46. Deshaun Watson at 46. Kirk Cousins at 45. Patrick Mahomes, eighth highest paid quarterback and three Super Bowls. 45 mil. Josh Allen at 43. And Matthew Stafford at 40 mil. So really, the price point starts for Purdy at like $40 million if he has a 2024 like he had in 2023. He's been better than Deshaun Watson. He's been better and more available than Watson and Kyler Murray. This past year, he was better than Jalen Hurts. He was in the running for MVP alongside Lamar Jackson and accounted for more touchdowns than Lamar. He's won more big games than Josh Allen and Kirk Cousins. Brock also might try to make up for what he has not gotten up to this point because he was a seventh round pick and seventh round picks don't make a lot of money unless they play well excel and then they cash in on that second contract so he's not going to play in 2025 if he plays like he did in 2024 as he did in 2023 for 1.1 million dollars without a contract extension the good thing for san francisco you still have two years here where he's on that contract, and then you can backload that deal. So theoretically, he's not making $40 million, and you can still live within the Super Bowl window with this prime right now, uh, or this core, I should say, right now in their prime years is what I meant to say. Will you be okay with paying Brock Purdy $40 million per year? Why for yes and for no? Let me know. Thanks for watching as you venture down to let us know what you're thinking and sound it off down in the comments because we love to engage with the audience. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so for year-round Niners coverage.